Hey there, in this tutorial we're gonna work on player movement for our multiplayer game. If you haven't seen the previous parts, please do watch them as this will be continuing from my last video. So let's get to it. First of all I'll open O player. I'll add the step event here. Inside it I'll add this. First of all if this player is not a local player, it'll exit the event so any code after this will not run. Then it gets the movement access using the arrow keys and moves the player with the move speed. So now our local player can move and we need to send the position to the other player. So this will create a 6 byte buffer to send that info. Here it writes the data type as data player update. Then it writes this player's id as an 8 bit integer. And then it writes the player's x and y coordinates as 16 bit signed integers. I'm using signed integers for the coordinates because they can be negative. And now we need to send the buffer. This part is for clients, so this checks if the player is not the server. In that case, it sends the buffer to the server. But if it is the server, it should send the position to all the clients. So in that case, it runs a for loop that loops through the client's list. This gets the socket from the list. If the socket is smaller than 0, which means that it's the server itself, it continues the loop. Continuing a loop moves it to the next iteration immediately and doesn't run the code after that. And here it sends the buffer to that client socket. Then at the end, the buffer is deleted. Now we need to receive this buffer on the other end. So I'll open O controller and go to the sync event. I'll go to the part where the data is received. So after the block for the init data buffer, I'll add this. This checks if the data received in the buffer is a player update. If it is, it gets the player ID of that player from the buffer. Then using vid, it runs this code in all the player instances. This is done to find the player instance with a matching player ID. So if its player ID is the same as the one received, it sets the position to the one in the buffer. So now I run the game, one server, one client, and you can see that their positions are in sync. Now this example currently only works with two players, but you can make it work with more than two players by making some small changes. First of all, when a new player connects to the server, you should loop through all the existing clients and let them know that a new player has joined. And here, when you receive a player's position, you need to make it so that the server forwards this position to the other players so that they get the update as well. There will be a project link in the description which works with more than 2 players. So that's it for this tutorial, I really hope it helped you. Make sure you subscribe to catch my future videos and check out my other tutorials. And I'll see you in the next one.